Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about frequently asked questions about Algacerai yogurt. We get a lot of questions about this super powerful yogurt, and um, it's very similar to Alruderai in the way we make it, although there are a few differences that you need to know. Um, and one of the, the things that's important to know about Algacerai yogurt is that it doesn't work very well in non-dairy yogurt. Um, it's, a, it's just very problematic. We've tried so many different kinds, and it just it doesn't work. It gets a yeasty stuff on it. It separates. It just So we just don't recommend it. So we recommend you make this with dairy yogurt, and we recommend you use ultra-pasteurized yogurt. Um, you can use half and half. You can use whole milk. You can use 2%. Um, any of those yogurts will work. But the more fat that's in the milk, the thicker the yogurt. Although it still does make a pretty nice yogurt even without in 2% yogurt. I do that all the time. So if your milk is not ultra-pasteurized, most organic milks are, if you get organic milk, um, you can heat it to like 195 or 185 Fahrenheit and uh, hold it there for like 10 minutes to denature the most of the lactic globulin that's in the milk. This allows the yogurt to thicken and join with other proteins, and this forms a mesh and allows it to get that curd that you like. So again, don't use non-dairy milk. It just doesn't work. And for a very rich and firm end product, um, half and half works the best, ultra pasteurized, of course. Uh, for semi-firm, two cups of 2% or whole dairy works really well. I like it because um, I usually use 2% because it, it works the best. It has less calories. It's not as calorically dense. And um, so that's what I usually use. But I always make sure it's ultra pasteurized. And I need to tell you something that I do with all of the yogurts. I really like A2 milk. And A2 milk, you can see it get it in regular grocery stores. You'll have a big A2 on it, and you'll see a blue one for 2% and a red carton for a whole percent. But A2 cows um, produce only A2 milk. Okay, so it's a little bit complicated, but Jersey or Guernsey or Normad or Brown Swiss breeds have a high percentage of A2 genes from the Holstein. Um, and there have been a lot of claims. There's a book, I think it's called The Devil in the Milk, that talks about this. And it says there have been claims that A2 milk is easier for humans to digest, improves health, lowers the risk for some diseases. Um, people tend to do a lot better on it. And um, only cows that have this kind of genetic makeup um, produce this type of milk. I actually really like that milk. It, um, it makes fabulous yogurt. And I'm not getting anything for saying this. I just, just like it. But anyway, it's what I use to make all my yogurts. Um, and they, one of the things that has been said is that true A2 milk can only be produced from cattle possessing the two copies of the A2 gene in their DNA. So um, animals receive one copy of the gene from one sire and one copy um, from the other. And it makes them to have this um, type of milk that's much easier on human digestion. So that's something that I, I read the book a long time ago. There's a lot more to it than this. And uh, a lot of farmers are converting their cows over to this um, and by breeding them differently. But anyway, that's the milk that I use. I think it makes the best yogurt of all the yogurts of all the milks I've used. So if you're interested, you'll probably see it in your local grocery store. Um, and it works very, very well for this yogurt. And for all yogurts. I use it for all my yogurts. My Yogurt Plus, my El Ruderai, and I really like it. Okay, so when you're making El Gasserai, um, if your yogurt, is, which is fermented for 36 hours, just like El Ruderai, um, and it separates into curds and whey, um, you should make sure you're using ultra-pasteurized milk. Or if you're not, if you're using regular milk, you can heat it to 195, hold it there for 10 minutes, and that denatures the lactoglobulins, like I said before. And um, then you should lower your yogurt maker if it's over fermenting. Usually the first batch can over ferment, but then the subsequent batches where you're using the yogurt as a starter, because you'll use two tablespoons of the previous yogurt you made, even if it separates into whey and curds, 
you can still use it. Um, they will be much more stable, and it usually doesn't separate. Um, you can lower the temperature between to 97 degrees or 98, um, and make sure your yoga maker has water in the bottom halfway up the jars. And you know, if your first batch that you make that's with the sachet that's getting, it's getting overly active. Um, because it's just getting activated. So sometimes it gets super strong and gets overly active and separates. So you can always use that as a starter. If you don't, you can still eat it, you can still consume it. It's still very, very good for you. But you can use that to make another batch. And you'll usually find that the other batches don't have separation. And you can still eat it and consume it. Or you can make um, all different kinds of smoothies with it. It tastes really good to do that with fruit. And can be, if you mix it up, it can be really super creamy and delicious. So now, if it continues to separate when you're using the yogurt as a starter, because you use two tablespoons, then one thing to know that that is not a sign of failure. Um, whey can be the normal results of a lower fat milk or the lactoglobulin in the milk not being denatured. So the whey is very healthy and consuming l as the curds, even the white part, um, you can consume them anyway, even if they don't. Um, but you can also, um, what we have found is if you add less prebio, like one tablespoon said two, it does calm it down and allow it to not separate. Now, something you should know is commercial yogurts tend to separate during production. They all do that. Um, and the reason they look so smooth and uniform when you open the tub is most of the time they add a stabilizer additive. We don't do that. We don't add stabilizers to our yogurts, any of our yogurts. So whether separate or not, your fermented superfood l in both the curds and whey is good to drink and very healthy. It has tons of protein, calcium, vitamin D, and high levels of B vitamins. And despite the similarity to yogurt, l and l both of those yogurts are not traditional yogurts. So they tend to act a little different. Um, but taking it... Um, in consuming the yogurt gives you high amounts of l and it really it's worth the making and worth the consuming because it it so supplies you with l in a much more effective way than taking supplements. So having separation at the bottle, even if it's just a little bit, that's pretty normal. And sometimes it's because of the milk you used if you used a lower fat percentage milk. Um, but if it starts happening a lot, um, just start using less prebio, and that will help it. Now, you can blend the Elgastera yogurt. I don't believe that that hurts probiotic foods. I've been doing that for 20-some years. Um, they're so microscopic and so small, the bacteria, that I think it would be very hard to kill it. So um, don't worry about blending it and making a smoothie with it. I've done this for so long, and it works very, very well. And um, it also makes it super thick if you put, like, frozen fruit in it. Now, if your gas or our yogurt expanded outside of the jar, jar, this can sometimes happen on the very first batch. Usually that's the only time it happens. And also if you didn't use ultra-pasteurized milk. If it tends to occur on subsequent batches when using this as a starter, this could happen for several reasons. You might have screwed the lid on the jar too tightly because that causes pressure to build up, causes the temperature to raise in the jar and get too hot, and makes it come out of the jar. Um, it may be that the yogurt starter and prebiotic didn't get mixed together too uniformly, although um, I have, I don't know that that's necessarily true because sometimes I don't mix mine very well and it still does fine. But if it does get this way, you can always stir it back together. Um, one of the main reasons this happens is because the appliance got too hot above 100 degrees. And you can get a thermometer and place the yogurt maker to test it. And here's the thing, sometimes the thermometers aren't accurate. And I have a, a thermometer that I sell, and on that page, um, it tells you how to recalibrate your thermometer to make sure it's accurate. You just put it in a glass of water with ice in it, see if it gets to the proper temperature, which I think is 32, I can't remember, Fahrenheit. And um, if, you, if it's not at that temperature, then you need to recalibrate, recalibrate it. So you take a little, there's a little screw on the back of the thermometer, and you just turn it a little bit until you get that right temperature. But I've got pictures and everything on there on how to recalibrate your thermometer because that's a really common thing that happens. I've seen them be off by as much as five to 10 degrees and that can really affect your yogurt. So um, recal I'm, I'll put that link in the description so you can, 
you scroll to the bottom of the page and it'll show you how to recalibrate your thermometer, which can be really important because they can really get off. Mine was off by quite a bit, so that's another thing. Uh, check your appliance to make sure the temperature's rising and and not getting too hot. That's another thing, and you have to use a thermometer to do that. So that's another. I've seen a lot of people's um, equipment get too hot, and it causes it to really overheat. Now, um, there's there's issues with you have to do it for 36 hours. You won't get the benefits if you only do it for 30 hours. So um, it's 30 hours is when it starts to grow and um, proliferate throughout the yogurt. So you want to make sure you do the 36 hours. It needs that to give you a lot of probiotics. Um, you can't use raw milk. People ask that a lot. The good bacteria will dominate in the good in the raw milk, and allogasteride won't survive or be the dominant strain. So we don't recommend it. And you can't heat the raw milk for that long a period of time. Um, if you want to use raw milk, you have to pasteurize it, which is, again, heat it to like 180 Fahrenheit or 195, either place that will work. Um, and hold it there. And then you bring it back down to 100 before you add the culture. So uh, do I have to ferment for 36 hours? Yes, I told you yes. We have a graph on the back of our package. You have to because it really doesn't start to grow until it gets to the 30 hours. So you don't, you don't want to miss out on those benefits because they're huge. So if your algasteride batches look like some of the pictures, I have pictures on them. I'm going to post this article so you can see pictures um, where it shows it's separated and some are uniform. You can always, if it's separated, you can always stir it back in. If there's a little way at the bottom, that's, that's not abnormal. Um, but you can always stir it back in or eat, have it in a smoothie. Um, and you really want to consume it and not throw it out because it's very, very good for you. And... You can reculture this yogurt over and over again, um, but make sure the yogurt is three weeks to a month old or less. It's better to reculture it when it's like a week old, um, but it'll last a long time in the fridge, but you can use it to reculture for up to a month. So um, the strains we're using in our El Gasserai is the BNR17 strain, which is what Dr. Davis recommends in his super um, gut book. And we have a lot of equipment that we recommend because you need kind of special equipment for this. You need equipment that goes for 36 hours. You need um, a temperature that can be controlled by 100. And there's a lot of, um, I've got a new yogurt maker on there too that's really nice that can make individual jars. But you can also get glass bowls um, that are wider Pyrex bowls and ferment those in bigger batches in that yogurt maker. And I think it, it's a really good one, too. And then I love the Lubelli yogurt maker. That's great. And I love the sous vide because I can make several jars in the sous vide all at once. So I will put the link in the description. Just make sure you can do it in Instapot, but you have to make sure that your Instapot doesn't go to 110. Most of the older brands don't, with the yogurt setting, are 110. That's too hot for um, El Gasserai. So... Um, you could make sure it has the 36 hour too. That's the other thing that most of them don't do is go to 36 hours. So we have lots of recipes we have. And there's one other thing I want to tell you about. Um, we, we have a gazebo yogurt where it's El Ruderin, El Gasserai, and we've been doing a lot more testing. We found that it's a lot better to eat the El Gasserai by itself and the El Ruderai by itself instead of combining them into one yogurt. Because what happens is El Ruderai tends to dominate because it's the stronger of the two and then you're not getting very much algasteride. And it's very, very hard to test for it because they're both lactobacillus and they can't differentiate between those species because they're subspecies of lactobacillus, so you can't do that in testing. Um, but we have found that people do better when they eat them separately, so making them separately, which is a good idea uh, to get a sous vide because you can make them el and el at the same time in different jars. But we have found, and we're doing more testing as we speak to, you know, to identify which is the best um, methods to do it. Because you can ferment el gasteri at higher heats than el ruderi. You can do 104, um, but you can't do el ruderi at 104. So we have found that it works the same pretty much at 100 to 104. So any, you, 
you can, if you want, do it at a higher heat. Um, but it will cause less separation if you keep it in hot. So that's why we recommend it. So those are some questions um, that people ask us a lot and things that we wanted to tell you um, that can help with l -Gasseride. So I hope that will help you and I hope you'll make lots of gasseride. The benefits are many. Um, there, It's a very important microbe that normally abides in your gut um, that can be killed by antibiotics. So it's a really good one to restore and a really fun one to make. So I hope that helps and I hope you'll make some yogurt. So we will talk to you next week.